This is for changing the front brake pads and rotors on a 2011 BMW X5 with 110,000 miles. Here's the kit purchased from FCP Euro. Kit costs about 250 bucks. Comes with uh, Techstar E pads, which are highly recommended. Here's the information if you want to order the pads for your vehicle. The kit from FCP Euro also comes with Zimmerman Z coat rotors, which are also highly rated rotors. Don't make the same mistake I've done in the past buy cheap rotors and pads, and you get a lot of squealing. Um, the braking distance is much longer than OEM. Um, getting a good pad with rotor should equal OEM performance. And here's a look at the toolkit I use on almost all of my maintenance. Um, this Torx and uh, E-Torque um, toolkit is pretty critical for anything you need on a BMW. And this Stanley um, toolkit gets you through a lot of uh, maintenance. All right, so let's start, take off your wheel. This is how you pop off the clip holding on your rotor. If you notice on a lot of other videos, they, you know, people wrestle with that thing uh, to get it off. You just use an extension off of a 3 8 drive from your socket set. And if you remove it the way I just showed you, it's a lot easier. Um, so release your brake disc with this set screw. It's a Torx T40 bit. Once that's removed, oh, and here's the uh, extension that I used to pop that clip off of the uh, uh, brake pad. And here's the um, E18 Torx that I'm going to use to remove the brake caliper from the hub. You've got these two bolts removed. And then you can move on to releasing the brake caliper from the disc. Now you're gonna see me kind of wrestling with this a little bit. Um, that's because the brake caliper pistons are pushed forward under normal braking, kind of squeezed up against the disc brake. And here you can see me kind of pulling the caliper towards me. And what that's doing is squeezing some of the uh, fluid back into from the um, the piston back into the system, just to give you enough of a, a gap to get that caliper away from the disc. Uh, so it rests up here on top of the shroud, pretty uh, conveniently. Next, you can remove the uh, disc. Now I will say, um, I actually ordered this. You'll see this brake disc is not that old. Um, and the pads are the same way, um, not that old. However, I bought really uh, poor quality uh, rotor and pads, just I didn't know if it would work or not, but it turns out it was terrible. I had a lot of squealing, brake distances were way extended past probably what OEM would be. Um, the squealing uh, coming to a stop is probably what really pushed me to change these out so if you think you're going to save money by going with cheap rotors and pads well when you eventually buy the right stuff just add the price of the poor quality rotors and pads and all the time that you had to take just like mine so please learn from my mistake it's, it's cheaper to do it right the first time all right so i used a as you can see i used a razor blade as a flat edge to scrape off any rust particles or um, debris from 
your bearing hub here and then I used a, a wire brush to get the uh, the rest of the stuff off and a rag eventually just to get that surface as clean as possible it's really important to get the surface clean if you even have a little particle on that surface it'll jam in between the rotor and your hub and could cause your wheel to wobble uh, here I've got um, I took off the brake pads um, but I, I took the outer pad and placed it against on the inner uh, where the inner pad would be just as a spacer to use the uh, piston compression tool uh, this allows you to place the force of the tool against the piston and, and get it to set back fully down in, into the um, um, so you can so you can get the new pads on once the piston is pushed all the way back in you'll know it um, using this tool it bottoms out and doesn't go any further but if you can crank on it it means that there, the piston can go further Um, I use the same razor blade to clean off the surface of the single piston caliper, uh, brake caliper. You have to be very careful to make sure that you don't even in the slightest way nick the rubber seal that is between the piston and the caliper. Um, if you even nick that at all, the fluid would come out and you'd have to either rebuild it or probably just replace it. So as long as you're really careful, you can use this. as It's a good tool to clean off the flat surfaces of uh, machine parts. Then I switch over to the wire brush. Same thing here, you don't want to puncture the rubber gasket with uh, the rubber seal with this, uh, with this tool. So, but it's uh, very important to get that surface clean so I go through the three, these three steps on all the machine surfaces that I usually deal with just to make sure that they're perfectly, perfectly clean and ready for use. And as you can see, the surface is very clean and ready to receive the new pads. I use Disc Brake Quiet from uh, CRC. As you can see, I've, I basically brush the entire surface of the back of the pad with this, this uh, material um, using an acid brush. Once it's applied, wait 10 minutes for it to dry, which I was able to do. I actually did this first before I took off any of the brake rotors or um, caliper. And um, so you should do the same. Let this cure for 10 minutes as per the installation instructions. You'll also need some of this brake disc uh, lubricant. got a uh, brush built in and an angled brush which helps you get the grease in the, on the mating surfaces and you're gonna want to hit so I'm hitting it here on the spring retainer and this is actually just to allow me to more easily get this inner brake pad placed inside of the caliper piston because it's actually a really tight fit so it's important to have some some grease on there to allow you to more easily get it in. Um, but you're going to want to um, place some of this grease where the brake pad is going to rub up against the caliper assembly. So it's like in these little ears, these little lobes here um, on both sides for both the inner, which is this first one I'm doing is the inner brake pad and also for the outer the same way. 
And be careful not to get any of this grease on the the surface of the brake pad that will be coming in contact with the brake rotor. As you can see, if you align it just right, it slides in pretty easily into the brake piston. But if you misalign this, it's a really difficult thing to get in. So just take your time and line it up first. Um, here I'm putting the wear sensor back on the pad. My wear sensor was not worn down, but if yours is, you'll have to replace the wear sensor. I would recommend not letting your brake pads get down to where the wear sensor indicates to you on the dash that your brake pads need to be changed because to clear that code, if you don't have um, software to clear those codes, you're not going to be able to do that. So monitor your brakes, replace them before your, your car tells you need to. Here I'm showing more grease being applied to the mating surfaces or where the metal surfaces come in contact with the assembly and with the brake pad. So here again, I'm being very careful to make sure I don't touch any of the red uh, anti-squeal uh, coating that I've applied. You gotta kind of wrestle with this one a little bit. Once you've got the pads in place, set the brake caliper up on the dust shroud and unbox the brake disc. Try to get as little grease on the surface of the brake rotors as possible. You'll see these brake rotors are coated. It's a baked on coating that does not need to be prepped or removed in any way. Just bolt up the new rotor to your cleaned hub assembly. Tighten up your set screw and get ready to put the caliper assembly in place. You've compressed the piston so it should not be an issue. Just make sure that the pads are flush against the piston and caliper. And once they are, you'll kind of have to wiggle it around a little bit to get it to seat. Once it's in place, you can put the two bolts that hold the assembly on back in position. Now, putting the spring clip back in, just do it in reverse order. Get it lined up and press for a I used a wire brush to clean the inner mating surface of the wheel.
install all five of your wheel bolts, being careful not to cross thread them. If you see, I start the rotation of my drill very slowly to make sure that there's no resistance and make sure I don't cross thread the bolts. I also have a lot of experience working on vehicles. If you're new to this, you should not use a drill. It's really easy to get these things cross-threaded. I also use a scissor jack um, with the same attachment. It's a really convenient way to raise and lower your vehicle. And that's it. Brake disc and pad for a 2011 BMW X5 with 110,000 miles on it. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe and thumbs up.